Hi everyone, welcome to my other video. Today I am starting a new series on React advanced topics and today my topic is pure component in React. Also when you should use this pure component. So let's get into it. So here for explanation I have created one React project using create react app and uh, I have opened the project in VS code and you can see this react application is running in port uh, 3000 and here in app.jss file I'm just deleting everything from here and writing RC which is a snippet to create one class full component of any react component and here uh, I will first uh, create one div for some input elements so here I will need one input element and the type of the element is text and on change of this element I will get one event and after uh, any keystroke or any change of input I will uh, simply update the state and I will uh, uh, write the state later and I will get the value from e.target.value and now I am just declaring the state uh, here the initial state will be one blank string so now I will need one button and the text of the button would be submit and on clicking on this button uh, what I will do is uh, I will set the state of a variable to the state of the text so whatever I will write uh, inside the input box it will first store in the uh, text state and then on clicking on this button it will store uh, the same value inside this value state and now I will uh, need one uh, div element where I will import all my components and I am giving the class name as comdiv because uh, I will import all the components right here so at first I will create one normal component and also giving the file name as normal component and here see uh, I have used RCE to create some snippet of this react component and inside return I will uh, uh, create one div and inside this div I will simply paste this normal component text so that I can identify this component and here I am writing this dot props dot value because I will pass the value from here. So I am importing this normal component and passing the value as props. So writing value equals to this dot state dot value. All right. Then I will uh, enter into this normal component, and here I will need one React lifecycle method that is component did update because this component did update lifecycle can make sure that uh, if the component has been re-rendered or not now if you look into this diagram uh, in the updating phase this component did update method always gets triggered after rendering a component now coming back to this component did update method I will get previous props and previous state and here I will only use previous props because I am just sending one props from its parent component and here I will log from normal component to identify and then I will log previous props and the current props as this dot props dot value all right now I will create another component and I will make the name of this component as pure component. So writing a file as pure component dot JSX and again uh, writing RC to make a snippet of this uh, React component. So initially it makes one normal component and here I'm uh, making it as pure component and I will copy everything from the normal component and paste it here and I will simply change the text from normal to pure component and everything will be the same as it is and finally I will import this pure component inside app.jsx file 
and also pass the value as props. Now I will quickly switch to the browser and I can see that everything is getting rendered properly and the value below normal component and pure component is showing as zero because I have set the initial state of the value uh, as zero and that value is getting passed to the child component as props. Now if I write 15 inside this text box, uh, you can see that uh, this normal component is getting re-rendered twice. Even though there is no change in the value, uh, in the value props because uh, we are updating the state of the value only after clicking on this submit button. Now if I click on this submit button, you can see there is one more re-render from the normal component uh, that is uh, updating with uh, 15 and then there is one update from pure component. Now if you just notice one thing there was no change uh, in the value props initially when I was writing in the text box 15. Uh, that time we actually don't need to re-render this normal component right. Even though we don't want to re-render this normal component, it was getting re-rendered twice. So for that reason, uh, we are using this pure component. See in the pure component, whenever there is uh, some changes in the props, then only it re-renders. And that's why if I, uh, when I uh, wrote 15 and when I clicked on this submit button then only uh, it started showing 15 under this pure component text. Now the value of my state and prop is same both uh, 15. Now if I click on this submit button you can see there is one re-render from normal component. Even though there is no change in the props there is one re-render from normal component. Now if I go to this normal component C from component deed update I am getting uh, the log. That means this component uh, was re-rendered. Now if I just write 25 you can see that whenever I am writing 25 it is again getting uh, re-rendered this normal component and after clicking on submit the prop is getting updated and that's why this pure component is getting re-rendered. So you have to keep in your mind that whenever you render a component that doesn't need to be updated if the prop is the same, uh, that time you can definitely use pure component to make a better performance of your react application. And now I will show you how you can have the same feature as pure component in your regular react component. So for that what you have to do is uh, in normal component you can create one more lifecycle method that is should component update. So by adding should component update you can have the flexibility of controlling all the changes uh, of your components, all the state changes and all the props changes. So whenever there is one change you can only that time you can uh, re-render your component and if there is no change in state or props you can just stop the rendering of your component. And here in should component update I will get next props and next state. And inside this lifecycle method I will check if there is any difference between next props and the current props. So I will check if next props dot value not equals to this dot props dot value that is the current props. So if this condition meets then I will return true otherwise I will uh, return false. This check says if there is any change in props then only the component will get re-rendered otherwise not. Now if I go back to the browser and uh, in the input box if I write 20 you can see there is no log in the console because there was no update in the props. 
uh, this time we are not allowing the component to render if there is no change in props now if i click on this submit button you can see there is some logs in the console so the first log is from the normal component because there is some props change uh, that is uh, we are changing to 20 and also there is one change from pure component because the props uh, was changed now if i click on again on submit button see there is no change at all there is no change in the props and for that reason uh, there is no update on the console also so if i change uh, from 20 to 25 and click on this submit button again then uh, you can see the changes in console so there was one change from 20 to 25 for the props that's why we can see these changes now if i click on the submit button again you can see there is no changes because uh, whenever uh, there is some changes in props so uh, react comes to this should component update and check if this is returning true or false so in our case we have set one condition if there is no change between the next props and the current props so that's all for today um, i think you got some idea when you should use pure component to enhance your project performance so thank you for watching please click on the subscribe and like button if you like this video thank you